Garage. So I recently got to interview the U of T solar car team regarding the aerodynamic design of their solar car. And one thing that was kind of missing from my interview was any video footage of their wind tunnel tests. So Mr. Neil Wu of the U of T solar car team has recently given me some of this footage. And I thought I'd put together a short video and show you guys what really happens in a wind tunnel test. We're going to be observing the aerodynamic behavior of the car at different speeds as well as different angles. So there you have it. The goal of the testing is to look at the aerodynamic features of the vehicle. And the different types of tests we can perform in a wind tunnel to show these aerodynamic features will be shown shortly. However, before any tests can be started, the vehicle must be first constructed and assembled. This is often the most time-consuming step. And we see here a time-lapse video of the students assembling the solar car in preparation for testing. So while we watch the students assemble the solar car, let's talk about the facility that the tests are being performed at. It's located at the UOIT, which is the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, in the ACE, which is the Automotive Centre of Excellence. At this facility, they have a brand new uh, wind tunnel. It's called a CWT, which is a climatic wind tunnel. And that means they can change a number of different features while performing the tests. So just some background here and some information on this wind tunnel. It has a large variable nozzle, 7 to 14.5 meters squared, so it can hold anything from a tractor to a bus to a regular passenger vehicle. The wind tunnel has a turntable in the floor, so you can look at different yaw angles which is what the solar car team was talking about before. And it also has a built-in chassis dy dynamometer, which is, one, I think, one of the first in the world to have this. So I said before that it's a climatic wind tunnel, and this means they can change the weather inside the wind tunnel. And an example here is they have some lights above where they can simulate solar sources, so they can simulate the sun in different conditions around the world, which is what actually the solar car team wants to do, because they're simulating the Australian sun. They can also create snow, rain, or a desert. They can change the temperature from anywhere minus 40 to plus 60 Celsius, and they can change the humidity from 5 to 95%. So they can basically simulate uh, any type of weather condition inside this wind tunnel to look at durability, longevity of components, as well as how these vehicles perform in these types of hazardous uh, weather conditions. So let's move on now and look at the different types of test techniques that they use in the wind tunnel, namely yarn and smoke flow visualization. So these are yarn that we glued onto the air body and when we turn on the wind tunnel it will basically show the direction of flow and from that we'll be able to verify our CFD results. Here we can see yarn strips taped to the underbody and side panels. And here we see Neil taping yarn strips to the driver fairing, both along the top, sides, and the back. These strips need to be applied manually, and their positions have to be carefully chosen. They also have yarn strips at the back of the body. In addition to the yarn strips, smoke generation will be used to show the flow around the vehicle. This is called smoke visualization, and here we can see the smoke generator being put into place. The smoke is generated and comes out of the tip of a wand, which is placed manually upstream at different positions. The smoke moves downstream and shows the flow around the vehicle. Here we can see a combination of the smoke flow and yarn strips on the underside of the vehicle. And here we see the same combination, but for the flow over the upper driver fairing. The purpose of these flow visualizations is to see how the air moves around the vehicle. Does the air remain attached, or does it separate from the vehicle surface and cause drag? The purpose of the yarn strips is to show how the flow is acting right at the surface of the vehicle. Generally, we want the yarn strips to be remaining flat against the surface. This means the flow is attached and moving smoothly along the surface of the body. Yarn strips that are flapping around and changing direction indicates an unsteady flow situation, and if they're actually changing direction and pointing upstream, this means a reversed flow direction, which indicates separation. 
So the movement and behavior of these yarn strips really shows us how the flow is acting near the surface of the body. So what happens if we find areas where the yarn strips are flapping rapidly, like in the case here at the back of the driver fairing or at the back of the one of the wheel fairings? This indicates these areas need to be improved aerodynamically. Moving on now to smoke flow visualization. As I said before, you have a wand upstream generating smoke and you see how the smoke flows around the vehicle. So this is looking at the flow around sort of the outside shape, not necessarily right near the surface as in the yarn. Here we can see how it moves around the driver canopy, but it doesn't go all the way around the back, it actually separates from the surface. And we can see here that somebody has to be sitting upstream with that wand, and it can be quite a windy job, especially at the high speeds for this wind tunnel. But the purpose here is to see how this airflow is moving around the vehicle at different positions. Lastly, the solar car team wanted to simulate the solar conditions of Australia. So the uh, light panels here were set up to simulate the solar sun, and they wanted to see how efficient their solar cells were at different conditions. And we can see here that simulation. So this was just a quick look at how wind tunnel tests are performed, and I hope you enjoyed it. Garage